Never served in state politics. Uh, went right to the uh, right to Congress after a stint in the Navy. But uh, he always, it seems like, was a power broker. He was. Especially, you know, over the last 20 years or so, in terms of his endorsement was very important. His support yeah. for state programs was very important, you know. So one of the many books that uh, he wrote, uh, we've been talking about his time serving in the military faith of my father's. Uh, but the next book that he wrote, where he basically profiled his entry into politics and then the people who played key roles, uh, particularly in the early years of his uh, political career, it's so interesting that uh, in that race, Troy, you're right. I mean, he came to Arizona. He fell in love with Cindy McCain, started to create a life here. It was during his time Well, wait time a second. You got that backwards. He <laughs> fell in love with Cindy McCain, First. and then he came to Arizona. He was no guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but then, uh, so the time, you can see Crossing Central right there uh, with the light rail track. So the, uh, uh, from what we know is this, the senator, um, had, I think, envisioned for a number of years that uh, he would enter politics. When he was serving as the Ni Navy's liaison uh, to Capitol Hill, he had a chance to make the acquaintances of a number of key senators. And he, uh, I think he probably, that was in the back of his mind almost uh, from the earliest days. It was so interesting. You guys had Marshall Trimble, the state historian, mm -hmm. on yesterday. And one of John McCain's earliest ventures uh, out into the wilds of Arizona was riding horseback with Marshall Trimble and a handful of others up into the Superstition Mountains. And he, um, in one of his books, he talked about the fact that he was, uh, he had always been told that New Mexico was the land of enchantment and saying, sorry, I, uh, I don't want to uh, disrespect our neighbors uh, to the east in New Mexico, but there is no more enchanting place on earth than than Arizona. And he came here and so in 1982 decided he was going to make that run for Congress. A lit, another political legend who Fire you don't hear talk. There, Ron, you see that? Yes. Firefighters, line. Firefighters. There's another uh, traffic officer. So it looks, looks like, like they're, they're just right about at the I-17. The yeah. yeah. yeah they're going to head south here soon. You know, Ron, it's uh, interesting you mentioned his early days here in political office too. When he first arrived here and started running for uh, Congress, people thought, "Who is this guy? He did, he's not from Arizona." And uh, he quickly shut it down and said he loved this state. And, uh, you know, after marrying Cindy McCain, he grew roots here and he just fell in love with uh, the high country. And they have this uh, property up there in Cornville, which he absolutely loved there on Oak Creek. And uh, he just he just loved our state. He loved everything about Can it. Can I tell you about one of the earliest moments? Because I covered that race in 1982 mm -hmm. when the senator first, uh, you know, was trying to kind of work his way out of the pack of right. a number of other Republican uh, candidates in that race. And, um, you know, he, d he did say that he felt maybe his temper got the best of him. He was in a debate with some other candidates and somebody tried to accuse him of being a carpetbagger as somebody who wasn't born and raised here in Arizona. Yes. And uh, he could he could hold his tongue no longer and mention the fact that uh, something along the lines of, hey, listen, pal, I wish I could have spent my entire life living here in the great first congressional district of Arizona. Yeah, he said, I grew up in the I Navy. I served my country and I, and moved every two I was years. held as prisoner for several years uh, while I was trying to represent my country. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, that made some headlines and that then made some people sit up and take notice about John McCain and the, the willingness he had to speak right from the heart as to what he was really feeling at the time. And we've all come to know that in terms of his sense of humor and as well as his deep love for the military and for Arizona and for his country in the years ever since. And his, his follow-up, the very last thing he said on that quote, which I think is one of my favorite quotes too, is he said, come to think of it, the place I've lived the longest in my life so far is Hanoi. Right. Five yeah. years, the more five than five years. five and a half years he spent there. And did you catch that comment just the other day, um, right after we got word of the senator's passing, we had so many... Uh, members of the United States Senate who were um, remembering times with Senator McCain and a senator uh, from Minnesota, a Democrat, by the way, remembered uh, the time that she had spent in Vietnam. As we show you some of the other pictures to the right here as well, law enforcement in large numbers. They're moving There's a pretty a good, good clip. And then we saw image the, the governor and Angela right Ducey uh, walking out to the curb. So I would imagine they're fairly close here. Mm -hmm. I mean, once they get off on, what would it be? Uh, well, or... they're heading south right now. They would, they may uh, exit Van Buren because they can use, right. utilize Van Buren in the uh, eastbound direction, uh, and and then come up from that section. But we'll have to just wait and see what exit they actually use. Just a Adams, of Jefferson. Oh, they're yeah. minutes away. Yeah, from exiting 
uh, the 17 to then head over to the state capitol. We know the state capitol is just a couple of miles uh, east of the I-17. You know, as we're watching the hearse right now on the I-17 uh, driving southbound, it, moments ago we saw live images coming from uh, ground, the ground shots, our photojournalists there on the I-17, and uh, quite the escort. All the officers and uh, all along Bethany Home Road, we saw firefighters saluting him and, uh, and all of those sailors and every branch of the military, uh, soldiers, uh, army men, all waiting for him at the state capitol. It's going to be quite the arrival. You know, the other day I was sitting in church on the night that he, uh, the alert came out that he was, uh, had passed away. And our pastor was wrapping up a, uh, a service and he talked about, if you were to disappear today, who would notice? And uh, clearly everybody notices this uh, great loss for and the country. The thing is with, with that, uh, John McCain will never disappear from this state. Never. Just like Barry Goldwater will right. never disappear. This is and I think that's when an you know that uh, somebody has lived their life full of purpose and meaning when strangers uh, are lining the streets to say their final goodbyes and pay the most respect that they can to him. And definitely a tribute, I think, to how he connected with people, no matter their race, their color, their uh, political preference, as we mentioned on so many occasions. Uh, where they were from, and uh, it, it really is uh, quite the presence here, and he is quite the man. I think today's uh, ceremony is special because there's a, a private aspect to it. It's, it's a very small club. Andrew, you and I were talking about this a little bit earlier. When, when you end up covering politics and politicians, you see how they deal with each other. There are very few men and women who get elected to national politics mm -hmm. from your state, right. so they kind of feel... So it's, it's a very small group and governor and things. So that's mostly who you're going to see in the, in the Capitol Dome today. But at 2 o'clock, everybody who's watching this right now, everybody who feels like they want to pay some sort of respect can do that today by walking through the Capitol. Which is so wonderful that the opportunity is, is so open for mm -hmm. anyone to come in for, you know, much of the afternoon into the evening hours. And uh, you just saw some ADOT vehicles. They've got a lot of those exits all blocked so that the freeway can remain closed. It looks like they're probably approaching an exit here real soon. Uh, they've been on the 17 for a little while now. Yeah, they've got they to look to There's be only a couple of exits a to, yeah. uh, to utilize to get to the um, state capitol. Yeah, I mean, they go too much further. They'll be hitting the Durango curve down there, won't well, they? Well, here's a wider look here from Skyfox. Yeah, See, they've they got the, the traffic stopped mm -hmm. uh, on the inbound. So. Shouldn't be too much longer. So, uh, you know, when they have the, the governor and uh, the first lady of our state uh, standing uh, on the sidewalk, they're expecting them uh, fairly soon. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. I, I think it's going to be very um, inspirational and impressive uh, when we can back up once the uh, hearse arrives there and see what the greeting is going to be there at the Capitol. As, as we mentioned, all branches of the military represented. There they are exiting Jefferson right now. I'll take Jefferson straight mm -hmm. down. So and this should be a pretty straight shot. What do you think? Yep. Two or three minutes? Yeah. yeah. Tops. Very close. And there they and are getting off. Oh, uh, yeah, live look here from the ground as you see them getting off the, the I-17 southbound as they continue on to uh, Arizona State Capitol here. So they will be greeted by a National Guard uh, casket team. I spoke with the sergeant in charge of that yesterday. He says this is uh, his team. This, these are the best of the best in what they do. They do dozens of these a month, mm -hmm. but there are very few people who get the kind of honor their, uh, Senator John McCain is going to get. Uh, and generally, it's basically somebody who's been killed in action, uh, who's got 20 plus years in the military, a Medal of Honor winner, mm -hmm. or somebody like John McCain who has served this country for some 60 years. So they will, they will bring him in. It's five men and one woman. And then once they bring him into the uh, Capitol Rotunda, DPS will then take over with their honor guard. Yeah. And they will stand with four officers surrounding him uh, over the next 24 hours or so. And here they are, more people lined across the streets of Jefferson. Much of uh, the Phoenix Fire Department out there showing their respects. Uh, with multiple engines and uh, emergency crews there. Yeah, so to the right of your screen there, of course, you see uh, that's the Arizona State Capitol and all of the people uh, standing street side. And here's Sky Fox images again, and you can see the hearse as it approaches, uh, you know, the, the state capitol there. They're going to be making that turn there at 17th Avenue in Adams, where we've got that uh, additional camera set up. Uh, just about uh, within probably the next minute or so, the governor, as you saw, standing there along with his wife. There's the railroad crossing, so that should be right there at about 19th Avenue. So the Capitol is what's the left of our screen here? If we're, yep, and uh, just coming off of Jefferson. Yeah. 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 So. It's a little bit to the north of there. 
So they're heading down into this. Just past uh, Washington. Now we're heading north. Okay, North Brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just to continue that thought from a moment ago, Troy, when you were talking about the senator and um, his time in Vietnam, it was the senator from Minnesota, Amy Klobuchar, who actually was in Vietnam several years ago with Senator McCain, and he took her to the Hanoi Hilton. That facility still exists. And he walked her in and showed her the cell where he had been held. And here's a man who is trying, I think, to show everyone how you can be kind and you can forgive and forget. Right. He played a major role in restoring relations between the United States and the nation of Vietnam, the very nation where he had been held as a captive and was willing to walk into the very building where he'd been held um, as a message that I think we can all maybe, uh, even in his passing, learn a lot from the way he lived his life. You know, we're on um, interesting to note, too. You know, Grant Woods, he's, um, you know, he was his John McCain's congressional chief of staff. When, chief of staff, yeah. Yeah, and Grant Woods has deep roots here in Arizona, attorney general, and he's said about the, the senator, he said, you know, if there was one man, one thing he, he taught us is, is how to live. He taught us how to live. And then in, um, and the other thing, as Grant Woods was breaking down, as he shared, there's something else he taught us how to do, and that was how to die, because he, he lived, um, you know, such a strong life and um, such a strong man and has uh, now left behind such a legacy as we see now as he approaches the Arizona State Capitol. Governor Ducey and Angela appear to be looking back towards the family as, uh, as they pull up behind the hearse. And there, I believe, is the honor guard, the uh, casket team, as they're, as they're known. I believe that'll be the team that will uh, take the senator uh, out of the hearse and move into the Capitol. Uh, the senator's sons, uh, Jack and Jimmy, are expected to be here. I, I, we don't have any advance notice about Megan or the other children uh, being here today. But we do know that Jack and Jimmy will be with uh, Cindy, uh, Cindy McCain, as they arrived here today. Uh, the, the Capitol building got a thorough uh, overhaul, Ron. I know they were out there working on it over the last couple of days, trying to make sure everything is perfect. And this does appear to be a, a, a very scene uh, for this memorial. And welcome to News and Now, a special show honoring Senator John McCain as he has just arrived at the Arizona State Capitol. Uh, let's listen into our Fox 10 coverage right now. Another Jack serve.
Megan is there. Yeah. Jack and Jimmy. Send his other sons. Loving God, see our tears for our brother, our father, our husband, our fellow citizen, our senator. Let these tears bring blooms in the desert he loved, in the country he served, and in all our hearts. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Governor Ducey, Governor Brewer, Governor Symington, Governor Napolitano, Representative Colby, Senator Schlatz, Senator Heller, Senator Flake, Cindy McCain, and all members of the McCain family and friends. John McCain believed in America. He believed in its people, its values, and its institutions. He said he came to this realization during his time as a POW in Vietnam. I fell in love with my country, he said, when I was a prisoner in someone else's. As a result, he dedicated his life to serve his country. When he saw challenges to its institutions or values, he fought to protect them. Thus, his efforts to rein in excess campaign expenditures and congressional earmarks, which he viewed as corrupting our values and institutions. And his insistence that battlefield detainees be treated in accordance with American law and values. In international affairs, his beliefs led Senator McCain to promote American principles of freedom and democracy for others. And in our military campaigns, to support our missions and our troops. John had a keen eye for American interests and could spot dangerous adversaries a mile away. He was among the first to advocate the surge in Iraq to regain the initiative in the war there. I've been with Senator McCain all around the world and I will tell you that he had better instincts about how and when and where to assert American power than any other leader that I've known. He had been to more countries, knew more foreign leaders, and had a better grasp of history than any other American official, including our secretaries of state. One illustration that we're all familiar with uh, was when others were looking into Vladimir Putin's eyes with an eye of understanding him and reaching accommodation with him. John, of course, said, I looked into his eyes and I saw KGB. While I believe John's greatest contribution was to American national security, we must comment a bit on Arizona interests as well. In a word, he loved his adopted state. He loved its beauty. He was committed to protecting our environment and our water and our forests. He worked throughout his career with our Native American citizens and with Arizona's veterans. He was a big champion of our many military installations. Some have disagreed with some of Senator McCain's votes on policy positions, but that should not diminish our gratitude for his service. And let's return to where I began. John's love for America and Arizona. He represented our values all over the world as senator from Arizona, and America is stronger for his fierce defense of our values. We can be proud he was our senator. I consider it a great privilege to have served with John, and I will miss him as a friend 
and as a strong force for America in the world. We've all seen the grainy video. A young man in his 30s emerges from behind the folding doors of a bus, plows forward with strength. His feet land on the ground and he limps forward towards freedom. It's John McCain and he's just spent five years as a prisoner of war, shot down, ejected from his plane, his right leg and both arms broken. He managed miraculously to save himself from drowning in the lake in which he landed, only to be captured by the North Vietnamese. No one expected John McCain to make it through the night, but as one of his fellow POWs put it, dying was not in his plan. Confined to solitude, tortured, the son and grandson of Navy admirals repeatedly refused release until every other American brother was released with him. Of all the speeches, interviews, and town hall meetings that have been played and replayed these days since John McCain has left us, it's this moment, more than any other, that ha can't help but stir a spirit of patriotism deep inside every American, bringing goosebumps to your arms and leaving the hair standing on the back of your neck. Because as you watch his release and learn his story, the Senator's life, lessons, and wisdom take on a much more meaningful context. When John McCain called on us to serve a purpose greater than one's own self-interest, it wasn't a talking point designed to win the next election. It was how he had actually lived his life and continued to live his life. It's how he wanted us to live ours. His talk of country first wasn't simply a slogan on a yard sign. It was what John McCain had done and demonstrated over and over and over again in the Navy, through Vietnam, and all the way to his favorite battles on the floor of the United States Senate. In 2008, he electrified an arena in Minneapolis, proclaiming, we're Americans and we never give up. We never quit. We never hide from history. We make history. Those weren't the empty words of some politician grabbing the microphone and the spotlight for a few fleeting moments. Men had followed John McCain into battle, and we knew we could do the same. This man was trusted, and he was tested. Qualities in increasingly short supply. We sometimes think that politics is life and death, but John McCain knew better because he had actually seen death and dying and tragedy. Make no mistake, he fought like hell for the causes he believed in. He plowed through election after election with the energy and focus of a warrior. But along the way, he did it with humor and humanity and without compromising the principles he held so dear. I'd rather lose an election than lose a war. And we knew he was telling us the truth. In that way, John McCain was about more than politics. He brought us above politics. John is probably the only politician who could get us to set aside politics and come together as a state and a nation, as we have. Like many of us here in Arizona, John McCain was from somewhere else. 
but his spirit, service, and fierce independence ultimately helped shape the state with which he became synonymous. Almost exactly 20 years ago, John McCain delivered the eulogy at Barry Goldwater's funeral. That other great legendary Arizonan who America holds dear in its heart. Where Barry Goldwater was born in Arizona, John McCain was Arizona's favorite adopted son. Nearly 45 years old when he moved to Arizona. This is the first place, he said, where he truly found a connection. Arizona has enchanted and claimed me, he wrote. I love it so much, and I'm so grateful for the privilege of representing the state and its people. But in reality, we were the ones who were privileged. Privileged to have John McCain fighting for us. Privileged to learn from him. Privileged that when he was back home, to run into him at the movies or at a ball game or at Starbucks. Just like he was any one of us, privileged to proudly call him a fellow Arizonan. To the rest of the world, John McCain was Arizona. When all of us here traveled and told people we were from Arizona, people knew two big things about it. John McCain and the Grand Canyon. Imagining Arizona without John McCain is like picturing an Arizona without the Grand Canyon. It's just not natural. To the woman who brought John McCain to Arizona, Cindy, thank you. The hearts and prayers of not only Angela and I, but our entire state and nation are with you and your family at this moment. Always known for your elegance, grace, and compassion, and those qualities have been on full display this past year. You are a model for us and an inspiration. Arizona loves you, Cindy McCain. To the woman that brought John McCain into this world, Mrs. McCain, Roberta, 106 years young, you raised a remarkable son, and we are truly blessed that you are among us still. When we look to you, there is no doubt where John McCain inherited his determination, resilience, and tenacity. It was built into his DNA. You see it in John's children, who carry on his spirit of service. Doug, Andy, Megan, Sydney, Jack, Jimmy, and Bridget, may God bless you and Keep all of you. Your father was very proud, and so is the state of Arizona. In May, Angela and I had the great honor of visiting with John and Cindy at their cabin. Before lunch, the senator broke the ice by sharing what was weighing on his mind most of all. Breaking into a signature grin, he said, my biggest challenge is deciding whether or not to run for re-election in 2022. <laughs> Dying, as has been observed 50 years earlier, was not in his plan. John McCain was a fighter, and he called on us to fight with him for American values, for the ideals and character of a free people, for justice and opportunity for all, for each other and for this blessed and bountiful country. None of us were ready for this. We never would have been ready for this. But John McCain often said of Americans, we never surrender. So while we grieve today as a state and as a nation, John McCain's fight for America isn't over. It's a fight all Americans are obligated to continue on his behalf. And as we march forward with the courage and resolve he would have demanded, may we take comfort in knowing in that fight, John McCain will always have our back.
our Heavenly Father. We are grateful to have been gathered here today in the Arizona State Capitol to honor the life and memory of thy servant, John Sidney McCain. We are grateful for his life and for his sacrifice. Gathered in this spot, we are especially grateful that John made Arizona his home. More than seven million of thy children have done likewise, and all of them, all of us, are grateful for John's able representation over these many years. We ask for thy spirit to abide with us as we mourn his passing. We ask for an added measure of thy spirit to be with John's sweet family, who have sacrificed so much for so long in sharing their loving husband and father with us for these many years. Send the comforter that they might be reminded that joy cometh in the morning. Now, as we go forward, let us remember thy humble servant with gladness and cheerfulness to answer his call to summon the better angels of our nature, to see and appreciate the humanity in our opponents, to more freely forgive so that we might be forgiven. Of this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Please stand. We have thanked God for the blessing that John McCain is and continues to be for us. Let us go now from this place in peace and comforting one another and the sure knowledge that one day we will join John in his home in heaven with his God.
Oh, a powerful uh, private ceremony there at the Arizona State Capitol. Joining me now is our very own Ron Hoon for added insight into this powerful tribute to the late Senator John McCain. Yeah. You know, I remember, uh, I think a lot of us have taken the time in recent weeks and months to read much of what he's written about his life. Sure, sure. You know, and I think he, um, in some of his earlier writings, he envisioned, uh, you know, a chance at some point to retire and enjoy his grandkids and maybe even at that point great-grandkids and spend time up in the part of the state that he loved so much, up where they have the, uh, the McCain home up there outside of Sedona. And it just didn't just it just didn't work out for mm -hmm. him to have those those golden years of retirement. But in a in a way, it's pretty hard to imagine John McCain, the fighter, um, not being actively engaged <laughs> yes. in an everyday sort of way in the uh, major issues of our time. And he has been front and center, really going all the way back to his days in the House of Representatives. You know, and, um, like Senator Flake, who followed in the steps of Senator John Kyle, you had John McCain, who followed the steps of Barry Goldwater. And talk about one legend passing the torch to another. Right. Um, it, uh, it has been such a privilege and such a great experience the handful of times that I've been able to spend time with uh, with John McCain. There you see the Attorney General mm -hmm. walking through. We have a handful of other state dignitaries that are kind of leading the procession. It won't be long now, um, you know, before we'll start to see the lines growing outside the Arizona State Capitol. As no doubt thousands of people will come by today to pay their respects. I do think that there was something that Governor Ducey said, which that was a powerful, emotional talk that he gave. But he said, you know, you, you just bump into him. So many people have stories of John McCain because you just bump into him. Right. You know, yeah, at Starbucks a, or yes. at the ball game uh -huh. or... He loves his sports. Or something else along those lines. He loves his sports. Mm -hmm. um, and th think about a legacy where since, since the 1950s, only two people have had the Senate seat, Barry Goldwater yeah. and John McCain. Yes. I mean, that is a true Arizona legacy. You know, it really is. Um, and it's interesting because I think the outside world maybe views Arizona. We do have uh, a uh, large number of registered Republicans. That was the party that he was. Uh, but we have a huge number of independents. And I think time and time again, independents, and many Democrats mm -hmm. uh, gave their, vo their voice of support through their vote to the senator, saying, you know, we trust you to do what's right for us, the people of Arizona. And I think he maybe rankled some people within his own party yes. ranks. I think yeah. that's safe to say. Right, right. Um, but uh, he always, always did what he felt was right for the nation and right for his constituents. As uh, Senator Flake mentioned mm -hmm. in his closing prayer, the seven million people in Arizona who he has so ably represented for such a long period of time. You know, you've got that picture of the Arizona State Capitol yes. right there to the left. And uh, how so impressive to see the array of American and Arizona flags mm -hmm. uh, at the entry uh, to today's um, solemn ceremony. Uh, as the hearse pulled up and yep. you just saw so many volunteers, so many members of law enforcement and of the military uh, who were there along with these key family members. You know, you could really tell that Megan McCain, his daughter, was just overcome yeah. by the emotion. It's Absolutely. so understandable. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if people remember it, but he actually appeared uh, shortly after the diagnosis on her daytime talk show that she's on, and um, she was fighting back tears even that day, and he was trying to, you know, <laughs> as you would expect, he was trying to kind of, right. you know, boost her spirits just a little bit, and I was just so touched by that moment because all she could do as she was fighting back the tears was to say, but I just love you so much. Mm. And um, they had a very special relationship, you know. Uh, Megan understands, just like uh, Senator McCain, what it's like to be in the spotlight. Yes. Uh, and have every word that you utter 
uh, picked apart, yep. you know, and all the rest. Right. And so I think they shared that um, certain level of camaraderie. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just, um, you could just tell, it's just, it's, it's, it's really a difficult, difficult, difficult day for her, for, for everyone in the family, but you could sure under t understand those tears that were being shed today by Megan. Sure, sure yeah. can. You and you really could feel it too when she when she passed the casket there uh, as she was leaving. And this is just the start of tributes that are going to happen uh, not only today, mm -hmm. but uh, tomorrow the bi the funeral that's going to be happening right yes. here in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it's going to be a very moving uh, w way scene we're going to see tomorrow when. Uh, John McCain leaves Arizona for the last time. That is going to be very powerful at the mm -hmm. uh, Phoenix Sky Harbor. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. I'm glad you brought that mm -hmm. up because uh, at that point then, it's almost symbolic that Arizona, one last time, is is handing him over to the nation. Yep. And um, the, just the love that he had for the state, that will be, that'll be more than just symbolic. I think it'll be quite emotional. The uh, His uh, decision to, you know, he had, uh, despite uh, Governor Ducey's really funny moment there where he said they were they had only visited a few months ago, I think at that point the senator probably had a pretty good idea of how things were going to go. Sure. And for, for him to say, all right, so my biggest challenge right now, do I run for re-election in 2022 <laughs> or do I not? Yeah. Um, you know, so, um, you know, he, he just kept that trademark sense of humor with him. For, uh, for his entire life. I loved what the governor said there toward the end of his remarks, and it's so true. You know this as well, Mike, that when you travel out of the state of Arizona and when you travel to other parts of the world, there are two things that people know about Arizona. Yeah, that was so true. We have the Grand Canyon and we have John McCain. Yeah. And it is to... Um, Try to even visualize Arizona now without John McCain is almost like trying to picture the state of Arizona without the Grand Canyon. Yeah, right. Powerful, powerful, and a, uh, an image I think that a lot of people can probably relate to today. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure thing. And and think about it when John McCain first came here, a lot of people said, "Well, how how long is he going to stay here? You know, is he coming just mm -hmm. to, to run for office and then get out and, and do something else?" And yeah. Mike, I'm really glad you brought that up because that was one of, if not the most um, frequented argument. You know, I covered that race in 1982. Wow. I feel so fortunate that I got assigned to that particular congressional race because I remember uh, going out and I must have either met him uh, once or twice before or spoken on the phone. I'm not sure what, but I do. I so clearly remember it. <laughs> I always will that as we parked the news car. And uh, he was further down the block, walking through uh, the congressional district there in Tempe and knocking on doors. And he saw me off in the distance. And just like his trademark, uh, just the way that he is, where uh, once you meet John McCain, uh, you've met a friend, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and he shouted from uh, down the block, hey, Ron, hi, pal, come on. Come on, let's walk the <laughs> district, you know? I mean, it was just that sort of upbeat, um, attitude that he always had toward life. And, and yet, uh, if I remember the actual vote, here we are the morning after a really crucial primary yes. election in the state of Arizona. All right. And uh, that one was a close one too. If I recall, it was just the difference of a couple of three percentage points between him and some of his mm -hmm. other challengers. Wow. I believe finishing second place to him was another man that I had followed who also was a, a great man who recently passed away named Ray Russell, who was uh, prominent in politics out there in the East Valley. And um, to just think uh, how different our state would have been and the loss we would have had if John McCain had not won that race. Maybe he would have just gone right back to it again two years later. But as it turned out, he was voted into Congress, Barry Goldwater retired, he moved into the Senate, and um, part, of, part of John McCain's persona that you would sense if you met him in person or that you probably remember yes. uh, from mon many of his comments Again, the governor really well pointed out, we know where that feistiness, that tenacity, <laughs> yeah. that determination comes from, yeah, that Roberta, yes, yeah. Yeah. from his 106-year-old mother amazing. who still calls him Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> well, Johnny boy, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, Ron, 
you you brought up a uh, great uh, blast from the past. Just last year, your your final interview with Senator John McCain. Yeah, this is interesting, Mike. I was just thinking about this today because um, this, I think, probably was one of the last interviews that the senator would have given uh, before his diagnosis. People may not remember, but 4th of July, as he so often did, it was a holiday. Mm -hmm. Where did John McCain want to be? Overseas. With the, the troops. troops. How many Thanksgivings did we see him showing up unannounced with the troops, yeah. whether it's Iraq, Afghanistan, or other parts of the world? And this was 4th of July last year. Now, he was diagnosed on the 13th of July, so this was just days mm -hmm. before his diagnosis. And um, somehow we were able to make the arrangements that I was going to get to spend just a couple of minutes with him on the phone from Afghanistan. Wow. And, the, and I have not heard this interview now since um, it would have aired that very day yeah. uh, here a year and a month, uh, well, a year and almost two months yeah, ago. Sure. But the thing that stands out to me, and we'll just play this clip for you here in a moment, was uh, he sort of chuckled when he talked about... I asked if he wanted to share some of what the troops were, were saying to him. Yeah. Because John McCain, uh, with all of his years of military experience, he knew that when you were on the ground, yes, you should meet with the commanders, you needed to get the big picture, but boy, you better spend some time with the troops and get the real feel of what's going yeah. on on the ground. Right. And he sort of chuckled and he said, well, one thing I can tell you is that our troops have no problem laying it down to a United States Senator as to what they think is right and wrong in the situation as they're currently dealing yes. with. Uh, so his fact-finding uh, trips from the first to the very last of the battlefield, which is this one we're gonna play for you right now, were always filled with a real sense of, I wanna hear what the troops say. So, uh, yeah, if you want to uh, play this, this is from the 4th of July last year, All right. days before the senator's diagnosis. There we go. Let's go to it. You tweeted this morning, there's no place I'd rather be on Independence Day than with the brave men and women of our armed forces in Afghanistan. Tell us a little bit about your meeting with them, would you? Well, uh, I've been coming to uh, Afghanistan uh, for 4th of July and other times for many years, and I'm always not only encouraged, but frankly invigorated being around these young people who are here serving their country in harm's way. And uh, we do a lot of events like promotions, uh, like medals, like uh, uh, town hall meetings, and lots of, uh, I have lunch with a number of the uh, service members from Arizona. And uh, it's, it's just a very uplifting and very, uh, rewarding experience to be in their company, and they seem to, at least some of them, enjoy my company. So I'm, so I'm glad to, to be able to go. It's a great experience. Uh, tell us about these town halls that you hold with them. Are they able to share their thoughts uh, with you regarding the mission and how it's going? Yes, they are. You know, one thing about young Americans, and that is, when they have a chance to talk to a senator, they don't hold back. But most of them are, are, are really dedicated to the job. Um, they think of ways, and many of them are good ways to do the job better. But um, uh, frankly, they, uh, they're, they're enthusiastic about their work, and uh, they're dedicated, and some of them tragically uh, are willing to sacrifice and, and uh, or have had to sacrifice, and uh, my, our prayers and for the families uh, go out to them today. Senator, you've made so many trips to both Iraq and Afghanistan, Afghanistan to support the troops. Thinking back to those early visits compared to today, and you're speaking to us from Kabul, how has, that, how has Kabul itself and other parts of Afghanistan, how have they changed from then to today? Well, on the good side, uh, there's now a lot of education for women, which was non-existent before. The economy is better. Uh, they're vigorous in their exercises in uh, elections and democracy. So there's been a lot of progress. Uh, the bad news is that the Haqqani Network and Al-Qaeda and the Taliban are still making gains and 
uh, we're going to have to change our strategy. We're going to have to do some things differently. And uh, we can't afford to lose. And in case people forget, that's where 9-11 began, as you know. So um, uh, we're, we're got the right people, I think, in charge now. And I think we've got the right strategy. But we've got to get it uh, approved by the president. And, uh, and I'd but I'm also very confident that General Mattis and General McMaster, our Secretary of Defense and Secretary and National Security Advisor, are both fully on board. So I'm I'm optimistic, but it's not going to be easy. Senator, thanks for spending your Fourth of July with the troops and a few minutes with us here at Fox 10. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. See ya. Bye.